Let's all stand up for a second. Here we are at New Year's Eve. Just a lot to think about. And, you know, Chris was just talking about the spiritual warfare in our head. And I thank God that there's hope. It's the word of God. The Bible says be transformed by the renewing of your mind. But we are in a battle. But this is what the, what the word of God promises us. We're more than conquerors through Christ. So what are your, whatever you're facing, I, I love the scripture that says, for this purpose, the son of God came to destroy every work of the devil. Anything that you're facing that's coming against you, coming against your mind, coming against your family, coming against your body, Jesus overcame it. And we're here in 2021 proclaiming that our king will be the king of 2022. And whatever we're facing will be defeated in the name of Jesus. Because it's already defeated. It's not going to be defeated. It's already defeated in the name of Jesus. We need to start walking our victory, proclaiming it, resisting it. And the Bible says if you resist the enemy, he will flee. You know what God is saying? Right now, he's building an endurance in us. Some of us right now, you want to get out of your problem. And God says, I'm going to get you out of your problem. You already got victory in your problem. But I need you right now to persevere and endure because I'm building some strength in you. I'm building, come on, I'm getting you ready to take off. Come on, go out there and do some warfare. But you're going to have to have a little endurance in your soul. And you're saying, God, deliver me now. And God says, I've already delivered you. You got to walk through this thing. How many understand that? Sometimes you got to walk through it. And I'm so glad that you're here in 2021. And it's gonna, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. And the key is not how fast you run. The key is to continue to run. And be consistent. Someone say consistent. You know, God has given us a word for 2022 and I'm gonna I do a quick teaching on it. And the word that he's given us, and this is our mission in 2022, is God's presence everywhere. And what I mean by that is, we know God is everywhere, but people aren't aware that he's everywhere. Jesus is a savior everywhere. He's a deliverer everywhere. He's a healer everywhere. He's a restorer everywhere. But how come we're not seeing it? I'll tell you why we're not seeing it. Because people aren't aware of it. And it's our responsibility. I went into a neighborhood two weeks ago. And it was, it was, a, it was on the east side of the city. And I, we drove through this ghetto. And as I was driving through the ghetto, I could see in this area, the devil's taking over the hood. And I was talking to my staff and I was saying, the reason the devil does whatever he wants in this neighborhood, huh? and when he says he does whatever he wants in this neighborhood, that means our little boys and little girls are getting raped. They're being recruited. People are being abused. People are dying bloody deaths. Families are falling apart. Gener generational curses are there. There's torment at night. People can't sleep. And there's no resistance and I told I told my staff I said that has to end every neighborhood in San Bernardino we need to get come on we need to have some strategic resistance in these neighborhoods and, and that they would know after the end of 2022 that they would be aware of something they never were aware of they'd be aware that there's a God that loves them, that there's hope, that there's an option, that there's change, that there can be a new beginning, that they could change, that they could be saved, that they could be born again, that they could be restored, that they're valuable, that they're loved, that God loves them. He's not forgotten about them, that they would, we would go to war. Paul says, shine your light. And this year we're going to be doing some light shining. This year, his presence is going to be everywhere. The light's going to be on in San Bernardino and in your homes. We're not going to be playing. Come on. There's not going to be, we're not going to be having electricity on, electricity on. We're going to have no shortages this year. We're going to have the light of Jesus Christ this year. There's going to be revival in our church, revival in our homes, revival in our city. 
We are going to war. Light against darkness. And darkness only wins when there's no light. We're going to turn on the light. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to start a fast like Jesus did for 21 days and we're going to declare war on our flesh that will try to hold us back and we declare war on the devil and we're saying right now I want God more than anything I want his presence in my life in my family right now I'm willing to do without food to get the presence of God we're going to turn the light on then what we're going to do at the beginning of the year we're going to start our holy warriors classes this is what's going to happen. I'm going to give you 30 days of boot camp and I'm going to be training. We're going to, we're going to, this is what we're going to do. We are going to eliminate everything that has nothing to do with God in our lives. It's, it's going to be a challenge, but I'll tell you this. What we're going to do is get, we're going to have 10 years worth of growth. Come on, in five weeks. We're going to be done. Because I'm done with it. I'm, I'm breaking up with sin. I'm breaking up with compromise. I'm breaking up with the devil. I'm breaking up with the poor. I'm breaking up. I'm living for God. Do you know why some of us can't make it? You're double-minded. And you know what double-minded means? It's, this is a problem. You're in the world and you're in with God. You can't do both. So you're struggling. I've learned this. The best way to overcome temptation is to repent of it. And say, I'm done with it. I'm not going to see how close I can get to the line. I am done with the line. I'm not getting close. I, my goal is to get close to God this year. The presence of God is my mission. So, and then what we're going to do, we're going to have a, we're going to have a prayer march on City Hall. We're going to, this is what we're going to do. Uh, it could be the biggest prayer march on City Hall ever. On a Saturday morning, we're going and we're going to do a worship set right there. We're going to pray and we're going to worship right there in City Hall. Come on, let's invade, come on, the strongholds of the devil and say this city belongs to God. Come on, how many are with me? Come on, God's presence everywhere. Then we're going to have our impartation services, fasting, holy warriors, prayer. We have 21 day devotionals. You're going to be able to keep track every day with us. 21 day journey. Then we're going to have, a, this is what we're going to do. Then Wednesday night, the end of the week month, Wednesday, Thursday night, Friday night. Sunday morning and Sunday night, we're going to have worship services, hear prophetic words from God. We're going to get fired up and ready for 2022 to shine some light. We're going to have this year outreaches, church on the streets every week. So we're not just going to have a church service right here. We're going to have church services in the hood. If we find out there was a murder, guess what? We're going to show up right there and have church right there in that neighborhood. Say, not enough's enough. You're not going to continue doing this in our neighborhoods. That's going to be 2022. We're going we're to get a truck with a, with a stage and just do Jesus street invasions. Just all of a sudden, pop up church right there. At night. In the day. Man, you guys are loud. That's right. Because Jesus, come on. Come on, this year, God's presence everywhere. We're going to get signs. You know, everybody has signs at every off ramp. We're going to have Jesus signs at every off ramp. We're going to let them know that Jesus loves you. He hasn't forgotten about you. There's still freedom. There's still hope. Don't you give up. God's still on your side. We're going to hit every single business. We're going to hit every single school. We're going to sit at every single home. We're going to knock on 60,000 doors in 2021. We're going to, this is what we're going to do. We're going to get 60,000 door hangers because that's how many households are in San Bernardino. We're going to pray with them. The, the, the door hanger is going to have the gospel and an invitation to come to church, to know Jesus. 
there's not going to see the devil's going to have, have a hard time in San Bernardino because there's come on there's a giant killer waking up right now we're just going to worship God live for God shine this light and we're saying God's presence everywhere every government agency we're going to do outreach on every business we're going to do outreach on every entertainment venue they're going to see us there tonight Tonight's going to be the last night they're going to have a rave in our city without the wave roll outreach right there doing some light resistance. Come on, some strong resistance. We're going to be shining light. Come on, you're going to do a rave in our city without no resistance? I don't think so in the name of... Right now there's warfare. Come on, on the north side. There's warfare on the south side. Right now we got probably 30,000 teenagers and young adults over there starting the year with the devil. with no resistance well the resistance starts tonight in the name of Jesus we come against every spirit that's trying to possess our kids we come against every spirit that's trying to deceive our children we come against every spirit that's trying to take their soul in the name of Jesus we resist you not in our city I'm telling you it's going to be a crazy year the harvest is ripe and the laborers are a few but I don't care we're gonna take the few we got here come on and we're gonna shine some light and we're gonna determine what side we're on and I tell you what not everybody's living for the devil there's a few people that are saying not in my family not in my city not in my marriage God's presence everywhere I'm even gonna get stickers so you can put on your car Put the wearer Lowry's. Follow me to the way or something like that. I don't know. Put a sticker on your car. We're going to get some yard signs. Put them in your front of your house. I serve the Lord. Or something. I don't know what we're going to do. But we're going to. It's everywhere. They go, oh, the way, the way, the way. What, what? It's going to be like graffiti all over the city. Come on, it's time for the church to wake up and come on, cause some turbulence. Okay, we're gonna get in the word right now. But we're going to war this Sunday. You get an opportunity to have perfect attendance. What's your attendance for 2022? 100%, dummy. I'm one for one. In baseball, you're batting a thousand, your Hall of Fame status. No one's ever done it. How many believe for 2022? You could come every Sunday. Come on, come on, keep the light on. It's easy to start a race. It's hard to continue it. It's hard to be consistent, but only the consistent get the breakthroughs. Starting is good. I'm so glad you're here tonight. But there's going to be things that tried to hold you back in 2022. If you don't resist them, they're staying. God, I thought it was going to be easy. No, it's not. It never said it was going to be easy. It said it was a fight. Fight for your purpose. Fight for your family. Fight for your marriage. Fight for your kids. Fight for your sanity. Come on. Fight for your health. It's a fight. But this is what God promises. If you keep on fighting, you win. There's no rewards for quitters. What'd you do in 2022? I quit. That's not a, there's nothing big about that. Anybody could quit. You might say in 2022, I fell, but I got right back up. I, and now I walked a little farther. I fell a little bit, but I get right back up and I walked a little farther. Than that. But now, you know what? I'm not falling as much because I made up my mind. I'm following Jesus till the end. So now, Father, in these next few moments, speak to us really quick. We're ready. His presence everywhere. Everyone will know about the church. Everyone will know about the gospel. We're going to pray for those door hangers. They're going to be like handkerchiefs back in the day. It's going to touch the house and cause a, it's going to cause a disruption in the spiritual realm. 
these, these door hangers aren't just going to be regular door hangers. They're going to be door hangers full of intercession, full of prayer, full of anointing, full of the blood of Jesus. And Father, something's going to happen when they're going to start getting dreams in their house. And say, I don't know what's going on. I, I, think, I think I better get to church. I better. Re God's going to do something. This is your vision, not mine. We're saying yes to it though. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's have a seat. God is good. How many know God is good? Praise the Lord. There we go. Trying to figure out how to do these things. Okay. I just want to give you a, just, we're going to go through a quick story. And it's a story about a lady in the Bible that they only call her the lady at the well. And she was at the well because she wanted water. Because you go to the water, the well, because you're thirsty. Jesus, after working all day, ministering all day, he's tired. But he's on a mission. He doesn't forget his mission. His disciples are hungry just like him. His disciples take off, and what they do is they go get some food. It's lunchtime. It's dinner time. We've been working all day long. Jesus goes ahead, and he goes to a village in Samaria. Jews usually would not go to Samaria. But Jesus was after someone that everybody walked out on, everybody looked down on, everybody forgot about her, but God says, I have it, baby. I know your pain. I know your hurt. And I know you're at the well all by yourself at noontime. And you're there at noontime because nobody will walk to the well with you. You're an outcast in our neighborhood. You're looked down upon. But I've got good news for you. If you feel like you're an outcast, if you feel like you're a nobody, if you feel unworthy, there's a God that sees value in you. And I'm going to tell you something. Stop devaluating what God values. She's valuable. He meets her at this well. And this is what it says. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw, this is um, first, I mean, John chapter 4, verse 7. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, please give me a drink. He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, are you a Jew? And I am a Samaritan woman? Why are you asking me for a drink? And she's asking... Why are you asking me for a drink? Because first of all, I'm a woman, and I'm a Samaritan, and I know how all you guys are. So what do you want from me? See, after you've been abused and hurt and let down over and over, you don't trust nobody. Even when someone's engaging in conversations, you have your guard up. And that was her way of saying, what do you want from me? Like, what, what's your... What's your take? What's your angle? Because I know you're not supposed to be talking to me. Because I know all you, all you guys, all you Jews look down on men, women and you look down on Samaritans. So I know this conversation is kind of out of order. So what do you want? And Jesus answers her. And I want you to understand what we're going to be talking about uh, uh, for a minute here. We're going to talk about how Jesus made made the Samaritan village aware of his presence. How are we going to make our home, our neighborhoods, our families aware of God's presence? Because unless they're aware of God's presence, the Bible says, acknowledge me in all of your ways and I will make your path straight. This is what it means. Until you acknowledge God, he can't go to work for you. So the enemy, what he wants you to do is just see your problems, see your difficulties, see your struggle, and look at everything in the physical realm. And the more you look at the physical realm, and the more you look at your problems, and the more you look at your past, and the more you look at your circumstance, the less faith you have. 
See, but the presence of God, a matter of fact, God was there at a well with her. The enemy wants you to think that you're all alone. God's not with you. Right there was the creator of the universe. Was there at the well? Was there in her pain? So this is the question. How do we make God's presence aware? How do we bring God's presence to the people? And this is how you do it. You meet them where they're at. He didn't judge her where she was at. He met her where she was at. She said, what do you want from me? And this is what Jesus said, reply. Verse 10. If you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. She goes, baby, right now you don't even know who you're talking to. You're, you're at, you're, if you only knew I came here to give you a gift, I came here to quench your thirst. I came here to make you whole. I came here to break your cycle. I came, come on, I came here to deliver you. I came here to be, come on, I came here to save you. I came here to give you eternal life. You just don't recognize the moment because you're blinded by your circumstance. If you only knew, I got a gift for you. And I love what he said, gift, because what he's saying, when I'm going to give you, you don't have to earn I already paid for it. I'm just here to give it to you. I'm here to deliver something to you. Come on, somebody here tonight. You're that Samaritan woman or that you're that Samaritan man that you've been looking and you've been thirsty and you've been going from well to well to well trying to quench your thirst. But there's a God that's saying, if you only knew who was here, the one that could give you a new start, the one that could give you freedom, the one that could give you eternal life, he's here. Living water's available. But it's spiritual. So then she goes on, but sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket. She said, and this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water from? And besides, do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well? And how can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoyed? Now check this out. Some of us have been going to the same well because that's the only well that you know about. Some of the wells that you've been going to, it's not, that, it's not something you discovered. It was something that was passed on to you. And that's all you know. All you know is the alcoholic well. All you know is the depression well. All you know is the lust well. All you know is the anger well. All you know is the poverty well. All you know is the rejection well. All you know is the abuse well. All you know is the suicide well. You been, it was passed on to you. And even this is a crazy thing. The well that disappoints you, that you go to over and over, you're almost convinced that it's good. And Jesus said, come on, Jesus. This is the well we all been drinking from. He goes, this well doesn't quench your thirst, baby. I'm going to tell you something in 2022. You're never going to drink yourself into freedom. Just one more drink. Then I'll be in nirvana. All I need is just one more toke, and I'll get to the high that I'll never need to get high again. One more look at the porn, just one more look, and I know I'll be satisfied. I, I just know, just one more look. I, I'm almost there. I don't care how much you look, and I don't care how much you go to that well. That well's going to leave you empty. That well's going to leave you disappointed. And Jesus is saying, come on, baby. Come on, son. Stop going to that well. I got living water for you. I got something that will truly quench you, set you free, and satisfy you. Come on. Does anybody need the peace of the Lord in their life? The problem Jesus is having now He's talking to someone that's stuck in the physical realm. She's, he's talking spiritual. 
She's talking physical. So he needs to get her into the spiritual realm, get her eyes off the physical so she can get her spiritual breakthrough. The problem you have is not a physical problem. The problems we have are spiritual problems. Jesus replied. So this conversation going back and forth. Anyone who drinks this water in this well will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh, bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. So in order to make his presence known everywhere, everywhere, what he does, he goes to where they're at. He meets them at their well. He meets her at her place of thirst. The second thing he does, he offers her eternal life. He offers her living water. Their world out there is hurting. They're broken. They need a taste, a drink of the living water. They need the drink that will quench their thirst and give them eternal life. The world is looking for what God has given you. But check this out. Jesus did not say, I'll give you water alone. He says, I'll make you into a bubbling spring. Now that's different. What he's saying, I'll make you into a well. So this is what he's saying. I'm going to set you up that you'll never have to live from the outside and ever again because you'll have what you need on the inside. I'm going to wake somebody up today and let you know that Jesus doesn't just want to satisfy you for a minute and give you a little cup of water. He wants to change your existence. He wants to make you a bubbling spring. What he's saying is, I want to make you a source. That when people are thirsty, when people need encouragement, when people need deliverance, when people need joy, when people need peace, they have to come to a bubbling spring. And God is saying, I put my spring in my people. God is saying, God is giving you more than enough. I, you got to get this in your spirit. We got to see, stop seeing ourselves as victims. And we got to start seeing ourselves as sources of God. You need a breakthrough? Come to me. Because on New Year's Eve, I received my bubbling spring. I no longer live from the outside in. I now live from the inside out. My joy is not attached to a person. My joy is not attached to a thing. My joy is not attached to a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a husband, a wife, my money. It's something that's bubbling inside of me. You could take away my stuff, but you can't take away my spring. <laughs> Say it with me. I'm a bubbling spring. So he's offering living water, and he's offering a change in your constitution of who you are. You will no longer go to wells. You will now be a well. You got to get this in your spirit. Come on, someone get this in your spirit. You're trying to get something that God already made you. Let's finish this. She don't, still don't get it. Please, sir, the woman said, give me some of this water that you're talking about. Then I'll never be thirsty again, and I won't have to, I won't have to come here for water anymore. And then she's, now Jesus is cool right here, because this is what he's doing now. The second way that we, the third way that we make the presence of God known or appear or, appear or prevalent is this, depend on on the Holy Spirit to show them their true condition. Now, say, why will you depend on the Holy Spirit? Because Jesus now is operating in a word of knowledge. So now what he's saying, you still don't get it, baby. You keep talking about this well. I'm not talking about this well. I'm talking about some spiritual water. I'm talking about your soul. I'm talking about inside of you. I'm talking about your mindset. I'm talking about, come on, I'm talking about that emptiness you got inside of you, that thirst that you can't quench. And I'm going to right now bring you to your issue, to your well. 
This is the well that you keep going to, and this is what I'm talking about. You keep going to this well to get satisfaction. You keep going to this well to get your high. You keep going to this well to numb your pain. You keep going to this well to escape. But I'm going to explain to you the well you've been going to. Now, let's get down to the nitty-gritty, baby, because I know you. How many know God knows us? And he know what, what, what wells you've been going to in secret. You look all pretty up in here. But you've been going to some dirty wells. And then you wonder why you're depressed. Because the well that you're going to gives you temporary thrills to leave you miserable. The well that you're drinking from is mixed with demons. And the Bible says you cannot drink of it, eat at the table of demons at the table of the Lord. You got to make up your mind. Are you going to God or are you going to keep on going to your wells? 2022 is not going to change because you wish it away. I just wish on the lucky star. Bring the candles over here. I know it's not my birthday, but we're going to just light them. And we're just going to wish for 2022. And if we blow out all the candles, God is saying sovereignly, he's given us our wishes. We don't have to change. We don't have to repent. We just wish. This is the truth. Some of you guys have been, this is what's wrong. Some of you guys have been going to Disneyland far too much. You believe in fantasy, but this is warfare. This is your future. This is your kids. Come on, this is your marriage. This is your destiny. This is your purpose. And we got to learn. Come on, we got to stop going to those dirty wells that leave us disappointed, empty, and depressed. Not in 2022. I'm shutting down that well. So he tells her, baby, this is a good one. We're going to go to your well now since you don't understand. You keep talking about my bucket. You keep talking about my, my roping long enough. You keep talking about where's this water. I'm going to tell you the well you've been going to. Where's your husband at? Because I know you're well, baby. You've been going to men to satisfy you. You feel so insecure that you're looking for validation from a man. And some of you guys are looking for your validation from a woman. And some of you guys are going through a midlife crisis right now because you're telling, am I getting older? Can I, do I still got it? Ah! I told Lisa, hey, I'm getting older. Just tell me I got it. <laughs> the other day I asked her, I asked her, she asked her, she just laughed at me. But I asked her, I mean, does the arms look big? And she goes, <laughs> I'm like, that's not the answer. You're supposed to say, oh my gosh, that's so big. You've been working out? No, I haven't been working out. It's just my DNA, baby. You got a real man. That's what I wanted. I didn't get it, though. But you got to be careful what wells you're going to to get your validation. You got to get set free in the name of Jesus from all those insecurities, that ego, that pride and say, God, this pride has to die because I need to know that I get all my validation from you. I'm tired of devaluating myself and allowing others to devaluate me. You find me so valuable that you're meeting with me on this New Year's Eve to talk to me about a new well. You want to give me a new life? I'm ready to receive it. She goes, baby, go get your husband. And she said, I don't got no husband. And then Jesus says, let's see what Jesus says. He, he just broke it down. Jesus said, you're right. Because it's exclamation point. It's not like you're right. You're right, girl. You don't have a husband, for you have had five husbands. 
and you're not even married to the man you're living with right now. You certainly spoke the truth. And they said, baby, we finally have discovered your well. And you're not married right now because you've given up on the marriage part. You're thinking, I could just live with them now and hopefully it'll work like this. Someone going through five marriages, even nowadays, that's an issue. Back in those days, it was a massive disgrace. She was known as a woman that went from man to man, to man, to man, to man. And now she's living with someone with no commitment. And the reason she's living with him with no commitment, because she's scared of the abuse and the disappointment that keeps coming from this well. But this is how we make Jesus pre 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 prevalent. This is how we make this God, God's presence aware. We help them discover the well they've been going to and let them know, baby, you've been going to that well, but there's a God that loves you. And he's saying, we're going to break this cycle right now. Just one meeting with Jesus Christ can change your cycle. One meeting with Jesus Christ can change your destiny. One meeting with Jesus Christ can change your makeup. One meeting with Jesus Christ can change your purpose. And I, I want you to understand, this lady represents all of us. <laughs> right? So then, you know what she does? She changes the subject. Like, you're getting too close to my business. <laughs> How many know when God starts like getting close to you, you start trying to change the subject. You're trying to act all spiritual. So she starts going from, from her issue, so she wants to talk about social issues. What about COVID? Do you have an answer for COVID? You know about my husband's and all this stuff, but do you know about COVID? Because that's the issue of the day, you know. Not my issues. Let's keep it. Like that. You get a little too close. <laughs> so this is what she does. Sir, the woman said, you must be a prophet. So tell me, why is it that you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place to worship? I was just thinking about that the other day. <laughs> well, me, Samar well, we Samaritans claim it is here at the Mount Gerizim where answers to worship. What do you think about that? <laughs> I love theology. How about you, Jesus? Let's keep this theological. Some of you guys go religious when God starts dealing with you. Some of you guys go to Frank to dance when it's time. Come on. Some of you guys even start speaking in tongues when the Holy Spirit starts getting close to you. And it's not even spiritual tongues, demonic tongues trying to stop you from getting your breakthrough. It's time for you to start realizing when God gets up in your business, he's not trying to hurt you. He's trying to operate in you. He's trying to change your destiny. He's trying to save your future. He's trying to break your cycle. But God is saying, come on, baby, let's get back to the matter. And this is what she tells him. I mean, he tells her, go, baby, look. It don't matter where you worship. The key is that you worship. You can worship on this mile. You can worship in your, you can worship in your bedroom. You can worship in another city. That's not the issue. God is worship, looking for worshipers that worship him in spirit and in truth. And what I'm trying to do, get you, I'm trying to get you some salvation. I'm trying to make you a real worshiper. I'm trying to break the religious, religion on you. I'm trying to break the condemnation on you. I'm trying to change your life. I'm trying right now. Just hold on, baby. The thing is, just worship me. And then she says, she crazy. The woman said, I know the Messiah is coming. Theology. The one who is called Christ, he's coming. And when he comes, he'll explain everything to us, including you. She's talking. 
starts going theology after he talked about her husbands. And then Jesus just drops a bomb on her. And he says, you're looking for who? The Christ, the Messiah? This is the first time that Jesus reveals who he is to a woman. There's people, churches nowadays, that somehow they think women are in a second class to men. Jesus, even in these days, was breaking the rules. Because when the disciples came and said, what are you talking to a woman for? And Jesus was basically saying, this is none of your business. Right now, we got a harvest. Come on, I'm working on her. And you don't know that the girl that you're despising, the girl that you're devaluating, the girl that you're disqualifying, she's a key to reach a whole city. Right now, I'm unlocking her. And when I unlock her, she's going to lock them. So right now, get out of my business. Right now, we're getting her. I'm revealing who I am to her. You think all this time you've been a nobody, and God says you're a key to unlock generations. And it's crazy how God loses the least of them, the foolish, the ones that everybody else disqualified. He goes, I choose her. Come on, this is what's going to happen. The last are going to be first, and the first are going to be last. People that they thought, they had it all together. And God says, come on, excuse me, excuse me. Not her, not her, not him, not him, him, not them. That's that girl. We know her. Five husbands and living and shacking up with the one she's with right now. She ain't right, Jesus. You shouldn't be talking to a person like that. And Jesus says, I came for sinners just like her. This is how I'm going to be revealed. This is how I'm going to make my presence known. You're going to know the next time you talk with her, there's something changed on the inside. She's not going to be talking about her failure. She's not going to be talking about her past. She's not going to be talking about her pain. She's not going to see herself a victim. She's going to see herself as a woman of God that experienced with Jesus. I'm a new person. Let me tell you what happened at the well today. We'll end it right here. So, this is what happened. That girl, when she heard he's a Messiah, the disciples just came back now. That girl just took off. She got a breakthrough that moment. Soon as he said, I'm the Savior, I'm the Deliverer, I'm the one that gives eternal life, I'm the one that gives new life, I'm the miracle worker. She goes, I've been looking for him. I've been waiting for him. And you've come to visit me. No one talks to me. And you've chosen me to have a private combo. Combo? She just took off. The Bible says that she left her bucket. She left her water, and she says, I don't need this well anymore. I thought I was thirsty, but just one encounter with Jesus has changed my destiny. I feel like something on the inside has changed. There's a joy bubbling. There's a love bubbling. There, come on, there's worth bubbling. There's righteousness bubbling. Jesus did something to me in this conversation. The Bible says, this is how we make God's presence known and aware. Last thing. You reach one. And God will use that one to reach them. This is a story how Jesus reached one woman in one day, in one day that changed one whole city. So she went to her hood. And she goes, guys, you know that I don't say nothing. Because in this society, I don't have a right to say anything. But I just can't keep my mouth shut. There's a river of living water in me. And it's bubbling up. And I just got to say something. I went to the well to quench my physical thirst. 
And I found one that knew everything about my well. That none, you guys know about my well, but he didn't know me, but somehow he knew. And then he told me he's the Messiah. And you know by the way I'm talking to you, something happened within me. You could tell by the authority and the smile and the peace and the joy that happened, that I'm walking in right now, that on New Year's Eve I got my breakthrough. You could tell that I came one way, but I left another way. You could tell there's something within me that has changed. And they looked at her, and the Bible says that they heard her, and she said just this, come and see. This guy told me everything about my life. Come and see. He's the Messiah. Come and see. And the Bible says that they began to stream towards him. She became the first official evangelist. A lady with five husbands. A lady that was sleeping with somebody. A lady that was disqualified from by everybody. And God is saying, you better stop disqualifying yourself because I qualified you. It's time to open up your mouth and just share your story. The devil meant it for harm, and God's going to use your testimony to change their minds. They came streaming to Jesus. They met up with Jesus, and they said, Jesus, can you please stay in our village for two days with us? Because we want to hear more about this message that changed crazy Lulu's life. Because we know that nobody could change her. Something happened to her. And the scripture says that for two days, he kept speaking the message of eternal life. And they all believed. And this is what they told the lady. You know, when you first came to us, we believed because you told us. We believed because we saw the change in you. But now we believe because we heard it ourselves. Thank you so much for bringing the Savior to my life. Thank you for so much for bringing me eternal life. Thank you for so much for being a brook, for being a bubbly, bubbly spring that we could come to and get life and get hope. And now we got what you got. Thank you. So tonight, I don't know what time it is, but it don't matter. It ain't 12 o'clock, I know that. The pastor, this is a long service. Kick back. You watch movies that are longer than this. With, a, with $20 popcorn and $18 milk duds. With no refills. And by the time I don't care how great that movie is, you still leave empty. You know what we do after watching a movie? What do you think about it? Go, oh, that's good. <laughs> still empty. Still depressed. <laughs> and I regret spending $18 for that popcorn. It wasn't that great either. Now, there has to be a day that you walk away from your well just like she did. That lady was never the same again. She no longer needed men to validate her or women to validate him. They got some validation from the creator of the universe that had a private meeting with her. If you feel like, man, I, I resemble that lady. I resemble him or her. You know, I just resemble that. Will you be like her and receive what he's offering? He goes, I'm offering you a gift. I've seen so many people in 20, in, in the New Year's Eve services, I hear it all the time. My first time at the church was New Year's Eve, and it changed my life. She was saying, I've, met, I've went to that well many days, all alone, never had a conversation with anybody. But and then God, God came and wiped away my tears, showed me my value, forgave me of everything I've ever done, gave me a new life. He gave me such a purpose that 
I became an evangelist. I was known for the one lady in one day that reached one city. And in 2022, you might not know my name, but I am that lady at the well. And I'm in heaven. And I have eternal life. And he, she's saying, I'm still speaking to you. Because Jesus not only chose to talk to me, he chose to write about me. Stop underestimating how awesome you are in Christ. You're so valuable to him. And I would even say this. Make up your mind. What well have you been going to? What well has become your source of identity? I need this. Without this, I can't survive. Lie, lie, lie. And you must resist it. That well is going to kill you. It will destroy you. Imagine being addicted to your well. That you see bad results, bad results, bad results, and you keep going. I see young ladies on the streets that are in their 20s that look like they're in their 40s or 50s because they're going to the well of methamphetamines or the well of abuse on the streets. And they're homeless in the cold right now because they say, I need this well. I'll die without it. And today's your day. Someone right now, the well that you've been going to, you're a drug dealer. And you're thinking, if I don't let go of the drug deal, if I let go of that drug deal, I have no income. And God says, please, I want to make you into a businessman. But you got to let go of that well. It's going to take you to prison. And you think you're going to gain. You're always going to lose. Everything you have is going to be taken away. You're going to get it, take it away, get it, take it away. It's a bad well. You're like that lady five times around and it ends up the same way. But this time, I'm going to outsmart everybody. It's not going to work. You got to change. You got to be willing to change. So tonight, let's all stand up. We're going to make God's presence known in 2020, known in 2022. God's presence everywhere. Say with me, God's presence everywhere. Everywhere you go, you're going to be light. Everywhere you go, you're going to be a source. Everywhere you go, you're going to be a blessing. Everywhere you go, you're going to be a source of breakthrough. Everywhere you go. But before we leave, let's be real with God. Jesus is here. And he's saying, will you allow me to give you the, live, the water, the living water that gives eternal life? Will you allow me to give you a brand new life today? Will you allow me to quench your thirst? Will you allow me to set you free? Will you allow me to give you eternal life? I have a friend that's in the hospital right now that I, that I work with for years. And they called me this week and they said, can you please pray for him? He has COVID. They have him on the respirator now. And, and I remember talking to my friend. And I go, bro, before I pray for healing, because I will pray for healing, is he saved? Does he know Jesus is his Lord and Savior? Has he drank from the well that gives, from the water that gives eternal life? Jesus is the only source of eternal life. There's no other source. Either you're saved or you're not. Either you've received the drink, received the forgiveness, placed your faith in him or you haven't. And you can't say, I want to continue to go to my well, but I want you. You got to do like her. Walk away. Leave your rope. Leave your pail. Leave that lifestyle. And come to the life you've been looking for. Today's your day for salvation and a new life. Surrender tonight. When I count to three, say, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus. I'm like that guy that you said, he's on a, re he's on a respirator. And, and the answer was, I don't know if he's saved. They, they told me this. He believes in God. I go, that's not enough. Believing that God exists does not save anybody. The devil believes that God exists. Some people think they're saved because they believe God exists. The devil believes God exists, but he's not saved. I go, he must confess Jesus as his Lord and Savior. I'm going to pray that God visits him in a dream. I'm going to pray. I remember, I remember one of my friends asked me to go to the hospital. His mom was in a coma with hours to live. It was in Marino Valley. 
I don't remember his name's Tomo. I was in a car business with him at that time. And Tomo's crying to me at work. He goes, I'm going through it, Marco. I go, what's up? He goes, my mom's dying in a hospital in Myrtle Valley. She's in a coma. And you've talked to me about Jesus. And my mom's not saved. And she dies right now. She's never received the living water. She's never received eternal life. She's lived a life apart from God her whole life. Can you please go pray with her? She has hours to live. And I remember going into the hospital. She's in a coma. I mean, what do you do? But pray. I was going to trust in the Holy Spirit to do the work. Because after solace, you meet them where they're at, you offer them Jesus, and we need the Holy Spirit to touch them and do a miracle. And I remember a miracle happened right in front of me. Within a minute of me praying for her, she came out of the coma all of a sudden. She looked me in the eye, and I, I, and I, I go, grab my hand. And she reached out her hand. I go, do you understand what I'm saying? If you do, squeeze my hand. And she squeezed my hand. I go, okay, okay, okay. I go, honey, this might be your last moment to hear this message. But Jesus loves you. And he sent his son to die for every one of your sins. So you could be forgiven and receive the gift of eternal life. And all you have to do is believe this and receive it. It's yours right now. He just wants to give you a gift of eternal life. Are you ready to receive Jesus as your Savior? Squeeze my hand. Squeeze. I go repeat after me in your mind everything I say and I let her in a prayer. I go, did you receive Jesus? She, I go, squeeze my hand. She squeezed my hand one last time. I go, congratulations. You have eternal life. Now, two hours later, she went into eternity i'm gonna see her again over there some of you right now i'm telling you some of us right now don't go into 2022 with that poisonous well that you've been going to god has a greater purpose for you you don't even know what god's ready to do for your life you're thinking man i've messed up so much and god says don't you worry about that i'm gonna use your mess ups as a powerful testimony that's gonna give me glory but i need you to make up your mind that you're done with that well Accept the offer. One. If you say, Pastor, that's me. Right before New Year's Eve, 2022. Leave your pride. If you even think you need to come up here, come. Don't let your pride stop you. Don't let procrastination stop you. It's time to take action. If you're saying, Pastor, I'm ready to give up my old well and receive the living water that God has for me. I need forgiveness. I need eternal life. I want to live a life of purpose. I need to turn around now in me and my family. And I want it to start with me. Come on. I want to say, it needs to start with me. It'll change. I, I know this moment can change my family, can change my marriage, can change my destiny, can change my city, can change my neighborhood. When I count to three, you say, Pastor, that's me. I'm ready to give it all up. When I count to three, raise your hands. One, two, three. Raise your hands all over this building. Say, that's me. I want to give up my well right now. I want to surrender it all. Everyone that wants to start over, you want to come on. You want to give it up. Come forward. Come on. Drop. Come forward real quick. This is your moment. This is your new beginning. Those that raise their hand, come forward. Those that right now, the Holy Spirit is still speaking to you. And you're saying, man, I got to surrender all. Don't you wait in that seat. There's a war for your soul. Today's your day to receive what you've been looking for. Compromise here. Lead the pride here. Come on, lead the depression here. Lead the suicide here. Come on, come on, lead the come on, lead those unhealthy relationships, the homosexuality, the lesbianism, the perversion. Leave it all here. Come on, it's your day. Come on. God has a purpose for you. You're called to be a prophet. You're called to be a missionary. You're called to be a man of God. You're called to be an evangelist. Come on, God has a purpose for your life.
life. He's not just going to save you. Come on, he has a purpose for your life. Hallelujah. Okay. I'm going to tell you this. I'm fighting for your soul tonight. And, and I'm going to say this. I'm proud of every one of you in this room. You guys are men and women of God. On New Year's Eve, you're not, come on, you're not on Las Vegas trip. You're not, come on, you're not at the rave over there. You're not in a club. You're not at your family's oldies party. You're right here in the house of God and you're making up your mind. And for me and my house, we're going to serve God in 2022. It takes a real man and woman to do this. And I'm going to say this. If you haven't messed up, this message ain't for you. Well, I've never messed up. Liar! Come up here right now and cast that spirit of lie on you. How many know we've all messed up? And some of us, I'll tell you, we're Christians for a really long time. And you don't go to the well every month or every week. You go to it every six months. You go, you stop, and then you go back. And God wants to deliver us from those six months quarterly wells that keep stealing our consistency. It makes you feel like, man, I'm a failure. You're not a failure. It's time to let it go. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Come on, it's time to let it go. Come on. Are you ready to receive forgiveness? Come on. Are you ready to have a new life? That lady, after that moment, was not known as the lady with the five husbands. She was known as the lady that brought, brought Jesus to town. She was known as the lady that reached the whole city in one day. And no one did that but Nineveh, I mean, that, but um, Jonah before that. Massive evangelist. Today's your day. Are you ready to fight for your purpose? Let's give it up. Does anybody, before I leave, before I pray, does anybody want to just share the well that you're leaving here? Anybody want to share? I'm leaving this here tonight. Anybody want to share? Come up here, honey. I'm not asking everybody. Sometimes you got to, you declare it, and when you declare it, it breaks the power of it. Yes. I'm leaving my hood. Okay. I'm leaving the streets. I'm She's leaving the streets. She's leaving the hood. She's leaving the gang banging. Come on. That's a big deal. Come on. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. We're breaking the generational curse of the hood life now. She's leaving her hood and she's walking into her new hood. Where you from? Heaven, what's up? I love it, baby. Anybody else want to share real quick? Anybody else want to share? Yes. I'm leaving behind doubt and fear and just moving forward. Hallelujah. Come on. I'm leaving it behind doubt and fear. Spirit of doubt, spirit of fear. We command you. Let him go. He's going forward. One more. Come on, baby. Come here. I just met with you the other day. I am leaving. You remember my name? Oh my gosh, wow. I'm going to the women's and children's shelter tonight. My son passed away a few weeks ago and I am leaving my addiction and I am going to be a better mother for my children. I am getting closer to God. I'm okay, I'm telling you, Ashley, I want to tell you, come on church, let's praise God. We're shining light. We're, come on, we're coming against the devil tonight. I met Ashley, I think yesterday, yesterday, and she's gone through the worst time of her life. Two months ago, her little baby died at night at sleep. And she has a choice. Keep going to the wells. And like I told her yesterday, your son has done his job if you totally surrender to God to 
And you know what Ashley's saying? My son's life was not in vain because it caused me to repent and get rid of the drugs and addiction. I'm checking into the women and children home today. Come on, God is saving Ashley and that family. One more praise to God. Okay, one more. I want to share one more. Yeah, I can't. What are you leaving behind? My anger and shame of my adoption. Your anger and? Shame that my mother gave me up for a dog. Okay. okay, identity. I've been given up. I'm worthless. I'm not important. And, and that, that ties into the anger. I'm upset. I've been hurt. I've been thrown away. It's time to leave that in 2021. We're not going to take those demons in 2022. Come on. Those things are going to hold us back. Those are weights. They're going to, come on, cause us to sink. Okay. I'm gonna do one more. I got to do one more. I just got to do one. I just, I just like shaming the devil. I just, I just like kicking him when he's down. Like bam, over here. Hallelujah. What do you leave behind? All my anger, worries, hate, pride. Um, it's a lot of things. Anger, pride, hate. Okay. Come on. How many know that's a big deal? Pride, anger, hate, unforgiveness, suicide. You're not going to 22 with us. I command you in the name of Jesus. Go. All right, we're going to pray. Now, how did this lady at the well receive a breakthrough? She received a breakthrough. <laughs> how did she receive it? I get it. She just received it. She didn't need Jesus to pray for for eight hours. She goes, you say you want to give me living water? I receive it. You say they're Messiah? I receive it. Let's go. Yeah. One more. Yeah. Leave behind. I want to give up self-sabotage and doubt and running away, thinking I'm not good enough, thinking I'm not strong enough to do what God's been telling me to do. I had breakthrough a few weeks ago, but I still... Be it's still been coming on me because I've been sick, but I give it up. In the name of Jesus, come on. Self-sabotage, unworthiness, all that we're leaving. Last one, last one she wanted to share. What do you, want? What are you leaving behind, baby? I'm leaving behind my drug addiction and my suicidal thoughts. It's just, it's just getting dirty and unworthy. Hey. I'm going to let you know we're doing spiritual warfare tonight because once you say, I'm giving it up, the devil no longer has authority over you. In the name of Jesus, I'm giving it up. I'm Come on, I'm exposing you. You're no longer going to control my mind and me not saying something. I'm saying something. I'm done with you. Oh, one more, all right. My anger from my twin dying when I was 18. And I've been angry like it should have been me instead of her drowning in the bathtub and I uh, I've had depression since then and I always felt like I shouldn't be here okay, so go, baby okay you could get trauma and you get stuck but we're done mama we're gonna give it to Jesus right now guilt trips all that so we're giving it up right now stop trying to fix the past and live in regret we're going we're pressing towards the future let's pray together let's bow our heads Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I thank you for valuing me so much that you brought me here tonight at the end of 2022 to start a new life. I accept your offer of forgiveness and freedom. I renounce every spirit of doubt, unbelief, anger, unforgiveness unworthiness rejection abuse grief I let it all go and I receive my new life in you I receive living water I receive eternal life fill me now with your Holy Spirit and power baptize me with your spirit right now and I command every spirit of darkness to leave me and my family in the name of Jesus. Spirit of darkness, 
I command you now. Go. 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 In Jesus name. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. Oh, Rabaka Taranabahi. Oh, Vienda Rebekaya. Fill him with your fire. Fill him with your spirit, Lord. Let's give a big shout what Jesus has done tonight. This is just the beginning. Come on, one more shout. Come on, this has to be a shout. Someone's receiving eternal life. All right. We're going to do, this is what we're going to do. We're going to finish praying here, but we're going to do a countdown out there for 2022. So pastor, what time is it? It's 10 to 12, my time. I don't, somewhere, it's almost 12, somewhere in this world. And right now we're accepting that. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to celebrate with our family. We're going to move forward. Sunday we're going to be here, but we're going to celebrate out there. We got a festival of foods from all around Tijuana and everywhere else. It's out there, okay. Food from everywhere. But we're going to be out there hanging out. We got a DJ out there. Have a little fun little fellowship before we leave let's celebrate together so so we, we bring in this new year together and a declaration let's end with one song real quick and then i'll, I'll dis we'll dismiss one song real quick up we'll do up 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 come on up celebration celebration